Hi, this is Chris. Welcome to part three of my Loom bookbinding tutorial. I have two books that are ready to cover, this small one and this larger one. I'll put these aside. And so today we're going to work on a bookmark, a headband, the cloth cover, and the end papers. So for a bookmark, we have different choices. We can have like this nice white satin ribbon. Here's a nice um, woven ribbon. I like that one. You could even do a piece of lace if you wanted. So let's let's do one of this for the larger book and let's do some satin for the smaller book. So I'm going to cut it a little bit longer than I want it. And this one, cut it out here. Here's a little trick I'm going to show you. These are markers that I got in a catalog. They're for um, covering scratches in furniture. They come in different sh uh, shades of wood like maple and cherry and oak and mahogany and walnut and a black one. And what I discovered, I did buy these to um, work on a frame to get some scratches out of a frame. But what I found out is that they are alcohol markers. And they're fairly inexpensive. In fact, um, I've seen them at the Dollar Tree where you could get three of them for a dollar. So I'll find a piece of wax paper. And what you can do with these, I'll cut off this sticky tape on here. So what you can do with these markers is you could take a bright white and you can color it in and make something that's um, a little more aged looking if you're into um, the vintage look or a junk journal for a junk journal. I've done these for uh, gent journals. And then you have whatever color of brown that you want. So that's um, a fun thing that I found out. Let's do another sample. That one was oak. This is walnut. So if you have alcohol inks or alcohol markers, you can decorate satin ribbons with those. And if you don't, you can try these little furniture markers that aren't quite as expensive. If I can find a link to these, I'll put it in the description box. But I've had them for several years. I'm sure they're still available. I think I like this oak color. I think I'll do it. I think I'll uh, dye it the oak color. Here is a sampler I made earlier with all the different colors. Okay, so this is our ribbon bookmark for this one. I haven't tried dyeing the twill tape. We'll try the oak again. See this twill tape is 100 percent polyester, so it would need an alcohol ink type thing to dye. And the satin tape 
is also 100% polyester. So these, these wouldn't uh, die well in like a tea bath or something like that. Okay, so I think because I'm doing one that's dyed, I think I'll do one that isn't dyed, just so we can see how the final book comes out. But I'll save this as a sample in case I ever wonder in the future. I can put that on there. I'll put it on later with a little bit of scotch tape. And then next time I go to use this, I'll know that um, how, how it looks when it dies. Okay, so attaching the bookmark is easy. We decide what's going to be the top of the book. I think I'm just going to pull this off a bit. And I'm going to use my art glitter glue. So we'll set that aside to dry. While those are drying, we'll talk about headbands. So I'll show you on a couple of commercially prepared books. Here's a cheaply made book. So this is the headband. It's a piece of cloth. This one is not put in very well. If I open the book in the middle, you'll see it's quite, quite crooked. It doesn't go all the way across, across the book. But it's a little piece of woven cloth with a braided edge to it, right there. And then the next example, this is a um, vintage book. Actually it's an um, antique book out of my own collection. And you can see the headband on this one. I'll open up the book. And you can see the headband is glued right to the pages. It bends with the pages. It gives them a nice finished edge. Here are some books that I made myself. On this one, I actually wove my own headband by taking a thread and wrapping it in a figure eight around two pieces of cording which is quite tedious. So one of the fun things about making your own books and creating your own books is that you have that freedom to construct them the way you want. This again is uh, one of my watercolor books. You can choose what paper you want. You can choose what size you want the book. You can choose how you decorate it, how you put it together. So our books are dry now, and we'll go on to the headband. I have here a few headbands that I've pulled out of old books, and you can get a better idea of how they're constructed. So they are a piece of twill tape. similar to the twill tape we used on the bookmark, except that had a chevron weave and this has a plain weave. And then it has the, um, like a little corded edge and the um, weaving on the top. Here's a plain one. This one is a simple weave. These are the two color weaves. This has a more distinctive weave to it. This one has an interesting weave. So if you take apart books for crafting, for making junk journals and things like that, 
you want to save all these parts. You can use them in other craft projects. You could use um, just some piping. Here's some vintage piping. I gotta have a couple of those. You could use here's a piece of braided trim. And it could be cut here and just use that braided edge at the top for your headband. You could take a piece of fabric and you could roll it over a piece of cording and stitch right under it by hand or by machine and make your own headband that way or this way. You could use a piece of lace at the top of your book. Here's some lace that's some vintage lace from I'm not sure what this was from. I think it was in my grandmother's lace box. Uh, this is crocheted onto the hem of maybe a child's slip. You could put something like that on there. I'll zoom us out again. So on this book, I could put one of these. You put the, the best side facing the inside of the book. I could trim that up a little bit and put that on there. Or I could just put a little lace on there like that. Or the rolled fabric. Or the trim. A little piece of this trim could go on there. So there's all different ways you can do that. You don't need to go to the trouble of weaving your own headband. I, like I said, I did that once or twice and I decided there were better, quicker ways than doing that. I've decided for the small book I'm going to use these headbands. They're very soft and flexible. This one has a little bit of glue and paper on it. it. comes right off. And because they're soft and flexible, I'm going to put them inside between the spine and the hollow tube. Originally I thought because the book was so small I should put it on the outside, but I think I'm going to put it on the inside. So I need to trim it up a little bit. And I'll measure it this way. have some hair bands here. I'm going to clamp that just right below the headband braid. Okay, we'll let that one dry.
Okay, these have dried. Let's take the wax paper out of there. And so now we have our headband and our tailband and our bookmark. And here's the little one. Dear. Glued my rubber band to it. Here we have a little headband and tailband. It just helps to dress up the book to have that. So next we need to put the hollow spine on this one which I've already cut and folded and it goes right here So I brought out my little fabric box again, and here's the fern fabric. This is the one that I used on this journal. So I think I'm going to use that fabric. And then on these other fabrics, this print might be too large for the little book. Let's see what the print looks like here. I remember I ordered these special from a company that does this Japanese kind of printing. I like the darker. So what I do is I'm checking out scale and how the pattern fits and how the fabric feels. This fabric feels starched, a little bit starched, which is fine. And I have this darker one. Let's see what the pattern is. This has quite a large pattern on it. A beautiful pattern. It would be hard to use on a book, small book like that. Kasuri Dye Works, made in Japan. $1.25. I can't remember where I found these. So I think I'll do the small book with the fern. And maybe the large book would be nice with the Japanese fabric. So I'll start with the easiest one, which is the fern fabric, because there's no directional pattern to this. And it can be any way we like. So what I'm going to do is I'll be cutting off the salvage. I'm going to go get my fabric scissors. Well, once again, I didn't press the record button or something. But to just recap, I placed my book on the fabric and I cut it about three quarters of an inch on each side. And I used my see-through ruler to make sure it was as square as I could get it. And I use the um, friction pin to draw my lines so I could cut them straight, fairly straight. 
And I just wanted to say that these are really great for working with fabric. They're erasable gel pens, but when you write on fabric, the ink will disappear when you um, put a warm iron over it. So even though I was writing on the inside, and that doesn't really make any difference, just in case the ink seep through or anything, it's nice to know that it disappears. So I went ahead and um, pressed the cloth because it's easier to work with if it doesn't have folds in it. And so then we're ready to start uh, covering this book. On the next step, we're going to take a little bit out where this cover is going to fold on itself. So we'll just eyeball that. It just will make it easier. Because what we'll be doing is this part will go over the cover. But when we get to the spine of the book, it will fold in like this. And then this little flap will go between. If you remember back, I took a little bit of cardboard off the corners that helps in this this part so this will fit down in here and what we want is to not be longer than where our threads are because then it will be hard to get the fabric the fabric in there so I think I have about a half an inch of room right in there so I'm just going to take a little bit off of there make it a little bit easier. So our book has had a lot of stuff glued to it and we're going to open it up, exercise that spine, loosen it up. And then we're going to check our hollow spine and make sure that it's free and able to flex. We can do that by taking this wooden dowel or skewer and just making sure that that is flexing in there. You could use um, Fabri-Tac for this, or you can use um, Art Glitter Glue, which I'm going to use. I haven't done this with Fabri-Tac before, so I'm not really not, not certain how it would work. But I'm just going to fold over a little bit of that right there. bit right there. And I'm going to double check it. Next, I'm going to work the cover in that space between the book boards and the text block. Buddy, you're not really welcome today. You'll have to go somewhere else.
So I just keep working the covers until I feel like everything is nice and even with the spine area. Now I'm going to take a little of my PVA glue. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry a little bit. So now we're going to miter the corners and work them in to make a nice neat corner. One thing I wanted to show that I didn't actually show in the last video was that I took my knife and I very carefully scraped these threads so that they're not too bumpy at the ends. So they kind of feather out. So I just sort of scraped them like that and any glue that might have built up. And I did that on both both of the covers. There'll be some bumpiness right here where the threads are, but then it tapers out and it goes smooth. So I want to clean all this up, pull off any little loose fibers, and then I'm going to glue my book block to my covers. So our little book is done. It opens up and it is an art sketchbook or maybe I should call it a sketch journal. It's not an art journal because these pages wouldn't really hold up to a lot of gluing and pasting and painting and things that art journals are known for. So it would be a sketch journal, sketching in, I think, any medium, although this is drawing paper, I would, I would watercolor in here, as long as it's not too wet. And that's our little book.
I'm just going to put some dress weights on here. As um, that glue is wet, it makes the paper uh, curl just a little bit. So we'll let it dry completely with these dress weights. Thanks for watching my tutorial on loom bookbinding method. I'm not a professional bookbinder by far. I'm an artist who likes to know how things are made and then try to make them myself. And so I taught myself this particular method of bookbinding. I can do a few other methods too, but I really enjoy this one for my um, watercolor journals. And so we have this little one here and I put in a pocket, I put in a book plate, and then I put in the cover from the paper pad that it came from. So um, this is 80 pound white paper. It's recommended for pencil, pen and ink, charcoal, pastel, pastels, crayon, and mixed media. I would do watercolor on this paper. It's very similar to the paper in my book that I showed earlier. This is a, a drawing paper. It's not necessarily for watercolor. But as long as your paints aren't too wet, it'll be fine. And then this is a little bit larger book. This also has a pocket and I put a copy of the information that came with the fabric, which I found out is kimono fabric. And then from the sketch pad that tells which kind of paper it is those in there and this paper is a thinner paper but it's very much like this journal that I made a few years ago which is a water a watercolor journal I did watercolors in here um, pencil and watercolor uh, it's a trip journal I was on on vacation so I took it with me and um, did a lot of paintings in this book and a little journaling so you can use all kinds of medias with these um, books. And I still have two more that I can cover. And since I don't need this many books, I will eventually be putting these in my Etsy shop. And so when I get several to choose from, um, then I will do a flip through. So keep checking back. And um, sometime in the next few weeks or months, depending on what else I get caught up in, I will do a flip through of these books and, and uh, tell you where you can purchase them if you're interested. If you'd like to make your own books, check out my descriptions on all three videos and I have a list of supplies uh, that will help get you started. So again, thanks for watching. Have a great day crafting. Bye bye! Mm -hmm.